right, fellas, welcome. Um, just started off with, I want to thank Governor Murphy uh, declaring New Jersey Football Week. It's going to be really exciting. We have uh, it kicks off with our game Thursday night and then 12 high school games uh, over the weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So a uh, great way to get the season started. Uh, excited about our fans, finally getting to play in front of our fans in our stadium and uh, should be a great atmosphere. And as you know, you hear all the stuff, oh, the hurricane that's moving up and those things. Look, we we got to go. We got to go win a football game, and we need our fans to do it. And uh, everybody, get your rain gear out, get your umbrella, whatever it needs to go. But we need to pack that place and make sure that uh, we have a home field advantage when we play in SHI Stadium. So that's my shout out to our fans. Can't wait to see you. Come rain or shine, we'll be there, and so will you. So looking forward to it. Questions. Greg, to piggyback off that, you have an expectation in mind. Is there a chance it's going to be a sellout? I mean, do you have any Better be, Sarge. <laughs> Better be a sellout. Greg, we just got the depth chart, so two quick questions. Uh, do you have an idea who's leading the backup quarterback battle? And Patrice Rene, where is he? wasn't on there. Where is he standing right now? Sure. Uh, obviously, the backup quarterback, I knew that would be a question, uh, Cratch, and it's a good one. I think it's, you know, they've done such a good job, both of them. And, you know, we we were hoping that it would just play itself out and it would be an easy decision. But they literally each day made it harder and harder to make a decision. And Sean and I just decided, depending on the situation, which I won't get into, obviously, but depending on the situation, one guy may be better suited for that situation if we ever had to go that way. Um, so we'll play that by ear. Sean and I will make that decision. We kind of have the, you know, what each situation would be and who would go. But rather than list it, I don't think that uh, anybody won the job, nor do I think anybody lost the backup job. So that's why we made it an oar, and, and we'll play it by ear. As far as Patrice Rene, he got an injury. Um, we're hopeful that he returns soon, but uh, he won't be able to play uh, this weekend. Greg, just uh, with Holland Pierce, I mean, what did you, have you kind of seen from his development and, and his uh, progression, you know, throughout camp and now as the season's going to go? Well, Holland, Holland's done an incredible job, really, from the day he showed up in our parking lot last September, I think it was, whenever it was early in our, uh, when we got back at it, and has just worked incredibly hard to reshape his body, number one, to learn our system and really to grow as a player. And he's he's become a legitimate guy in the in the mix. He will play. And, uh, you know, depending on how he does, he may play a lot. So that's a great story, a guy that um, literally came from on the street to now is going to be playing in a, in a big-time game. Greg, at the outset of camp, you said the offensive line's kind of up in the air. Where's the clarity on that position now that camp has finished? Well, you, you saw on the depth chart the starting five, and then and then there's some guys that'll that'll mix in there as well. Uh, I feel much better than I did when we started camp. Certainly not where we need to be, but uh, you know, as long as we keep progressing, eventually we'll get there. And that's what that's the charge to the offensive lineman, to Coach Oric and his group of guys is uh, let's just keep getting better every day. And, and I think they've met that challenge. Regarding Temple, two-part question, um, how much of a challenge is it to pre uh, prepare for a team that has so many transfers? It looks like up and down the lineup, you know, it's not really the same team as a year ago. And then, you know, piggybacking off that, the quarterback, you know, Georgia at one point won the job at Georgia, so a talented kid. What do you see out of the quarterback? Two really good questions, Sarge. Number one, uh, let me jump to the quarterback first, right, because – he touches the ball every play. He's a very good player. I'm very familiar with him. He was actually committed to us at Ohio State at one point So when I was coaching there. So, um, well, I was committed. I don't know if he was committed, but we were very much in, in contact. I can't really remember the details. But I know him as a high school player. I've seen him in Georgia tape. I've seen him, uh, you know, I think he's a really good player. I know he's a really good player. He's athletic. He's tall. He can throw the ball. He can run. Uh, definitely gives you a lot of challenges. Um, you know, it was announced today that, that um, the backup quarterback is the, is the freshman Lynch, and we all remember his brother from Northern Illinois. And when you do your research, his brother actually coached him in high school, running the same system. So what a great advantage, right, to have a couple years of experience in the system. So I think they have good depth at the quarterback position. Uh, as you mentioned, there's so many transfers. 
um, on defense and on offense, uh, that, that you just have to kind of do some research on each guy and then try to see where they will, how they will use those people in their scheme. Will they change their scheme? Will it be the same? I think the consistent thing, you look at their O-line, their O-line's an experienced group, and that's going to be a big challenge for us. Um, it looks like the O-line and then at wide receiver, um, five and zero are, you know, big-time guys. And, and uh, you know, we're going to have to know where they are and, and, and be able to defend them. So I think they really have a, uh, a potent offensive football team, uh, certainly with talent they do. Uh, running back will probably be by committee, which um, it sounds that way. I don't know, but you just read between the lines. It sounds like they're going to play more than one running back. Um, and then defensively, you know, they, they have some, some linebackers that I think really get after you. Uh, and, and, you know, like you said, they have the transfer from Washington State at one defensive end. And so it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, we're going to all be feeling our way through it. I'm sure they're going to be feeling their way th through it as well. But we have to come out ready to go. That's, that's all I can concern myself with. At the end of the day, we need to know who we're playing against for sure. But first games especially, more games are lost than one. Right? we got to make sure we take care of business, avoid the mistakes, and play really, really hard. And uh, in our home stadium, that's what we need to do. I think you met Maya Nahana too when he was 14 years old. What have you seen from him like, since he got here to now that he's a starter? What the growth he's made? Tremendous growth, uh, Cratch. He, when we took him as a transfer portal guy, um, Really, that was on the kid that I knew and coached in high school. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't tell you what he did at Minnesota, um, nor did it matter to me really. I think in the situation we were in and the situation he was in, I just felt like, you know, I've known him. He's been in my home. He's my friends with my my twins. So I mean, I've known this kid for a long time, and uh, I really loved coaching him in high school. And he's the same guy now. So I don't know what happened in between, but he's really playing well. Uh, he's going to get the start. And he's really earned the start. You know, um, I'm excited for him. Really excited. Greg, what have you seen out of Drew Singleton to name him a starter this year? Well, he's just he's he's really done a good job. And you know, it's different packages, right? So it, we don't know what they're going to major in. So we don't know if we're going to be in nickel or we're going to be in base. But Drew's played well, and uh, I just think that you know we. Drew is a guy that's a mature guy. He's a leader on our football team. And in some packages, he's his backup. In other packages, he's his starter. And um, I'm really glad he's on our team because he does a lot for us, not only on defense, but on special teams, he does a lot for us. Captain's announced yesterday. Can you just talk about those guys and, and having six of them this year? Yeah. I think, you know, one of the things with the super senior kind of concept is you got a lot of guys that return and I don't usually put a, a pre-cap on it I, I try to look at the votes and say where is there a clear line of delineation between you know this group and then the next level and that happened at six you know had it happened at four it would have been four um, and that's a good thing like when there's when the high level of delineation is six rather than four that's a good to me that's a good thing at least it's a signal we have uh, you know, six guys that the entire football team really looks up to, so uh, and admires and wants to wants to you know be like and please them. So that's important. Um, now we need them to step up. And the thing that I've always told captains is, it's a great honor to be a captain. But why did you get named a captain? By by your actions, right? How you carried yourself. You don't need to change now because someone put a ta a tag on you or put a C on you, right? Go out and be who you've been, and just know that's why you're in that position and go do it even better now. Greg, from a uh, regional perspective, um, do you embrace the challenge of facing a team like Temple, who, you know, not always uh, recruiting against, but, you know, some, some crossover, they're right down the road, old Big, big East rival. Uh, I know there's a couple more games, on, you know, on, on the slate, but do you embrace the challenge of it? Um, is it a pain, pain to kind of, you know, you know deal, with it, deal with, like, the localness of it? I like it. I think, you know, I think we've had some great games over the years. Uh, going back to one long time ago, and uh, it just seems like a natural fit, right? An easy one for uh, both of us to get back and forth to, uh, bringing fans to each other's stadiums. I think it's a it's a great game to have, and um, you know I know they're a good football team. I know that Coach Carey is a is a tremendous football coach. He's done it not only at Temple, but he's done it at other places too. I've always been a fan of his and the way he runs his program. So um, 
I think it's a great challenge for us to open the season with them because they're, they're a good football team. And I think it's great for New Jersey, Pennsylvania, the local football. Uh, you know, what's, what divides us? An hour, maybe? You know, that's pretty good. Greg, at the beginning of camp, we asked you about Muhammad Toure, and you said he's going to be switching between linebacker and end. He's currently listed as the backup defensive end. Is that still the plan to go back and forth, or is he going to stick there? Or no, he's going to play both. Yeah, we just you know he, everybody wants a depth chart, so we got to put him somewhere. He, he's uh, he's going to play both though. He's a, he's a, he gives us multi-positional flexibility, and that's what you love in a guy like that, right? Whether it's on first and second down or third down, we can move him all over the place. And I think what's happened with Muhammad is he's become comfortable enough with the scheme now that he can learn multiple positions. And that's that's a big step for him. He's a young guy. You got to remember, hasn't played a ton. He's had some productivity, but hasn't hasn't played a ton of plays. His productivity per play is pretty darn high. So we want to make sure we get him opportunities. Greg, when you guys arrive and, and you finish the Scarlet Walk, is that the last first? Is that kind of the last nostalgia piece for you and the team? And then it's you just move forward from there almost. Well, I think walking out on that or running out on that field with people in the stands will be probably the last first, right? Um, but, yeah, I think all this stuff is cool. I know the kids are excited about it to get back. I'm excited about it. I mean, heck, it's going to be fun to do that. That's a tradition that we started here back in 2001. Bob Mulcahy and I decided, you know, we, we, we have something here that's unique to Rutgers, and that's that we played the first football game ever. So let's celebrate that. Uh, since we're a football team, it made sense. And I think, to me, that's something that, that's really special. I know to, to our fans, that really became like a great, gathering spot you know you think back to some of those big games the, the you know eight ten deep along the scarlet walk i mean that was a real thing and i'm looking forward to that becoming that again um but yeah there's this gonna be fun i mean we're gonna have to keep our emotions in check because uh it's gonna be exciting and and like i said you know when i when when uh my guys are constantly monitoring the weather and giving me reports, right? And initially it was, ah, it's going to be nice. Now it's if he. I said, I don't care. Our fans will be there. I know they will. I know our team will be ready to go. I know our fans will be ready to go. SHI Stadium has to be a home field advantage. It wasn't last year. We're, you know, I'm not going to hide from that. We didn't do well in our home stadium. We need to change that this year. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.